Okay, so get this right off the bat. Bourdain Luther's book, The Future Ahead, hits you with this line. I will miss the sunrise. I will miss my parents. I will miss my brothers. The feeling of unsafety fills my bones. Wow. Talk about setting the scene, oh, right? No kidding. You just feel the weight of everything he's about to go through. Exactly. It's just so powerful because he's not just telling us about the Sudanese Civil War. He's making us feel it. Yeah, the fear, the uncertainty. And to think he's just a young man at this point. It's heavy stuff. And it's even heavier when you understand the context, the backdrop of this war. Because this wasn't just any war. You had the Arab-dominated government in the north clashing with the predominantly Christian and animist south. Yeah. Decades of tension, cultural and religious differences. It was a powder keg. And Lewis is right there when it explodes, forced to flee his home. It takes immense courage to face that kind of unknown, especially at that age. Mm. Millions around the world, by the way, face that same reality, becoming refugees in an instant. It makes you think about what that must be like, the challenges of navigating a new culture, a new language, being completely uprooted. It's something most of us can only really grasp through firsthand accounts like Lewis's. You know, you kind of expect him to find some kind of refuge in Khartoum, right? Like this big bustling city. Maybe he could blend in, start over. It's a natural hope, I think. Hmm. That a big city might offer some anonymity, a fresh start. Right, but it becomes a whole different kind of battleground for Lewis. He's hit with this, like, wall of prejudice for being a Southerner. And on top of it, trying to find work with the language barrier. Talk about a harsh reality check. It really gets to him, you can tell. He even starts questioning his own identity, you know. It makes sense, though, when you think about what he's going through. This isn't just about being a refugee. It's about having everything familiar ripped away. Home culture, language. It's like the rug's been pulled out from under him. And then in this new place. He's constantly reminded that he's different, that he doesn't belong. And then he gets this job as a servant. Uh, it's just heartbreaking to read, honestly. You can hear the anger and frustration in his words. It's more than just a bad job, though. It's really? like this culmination of everything he's been dealing with. And then he quits, even though he doesn't have anything else lined up. He does. He says, I refuse to be poor mentally powerful, right? He's recognizing that true poverty isn't just about money. It's about letting yourself be broken mentally and emotionally. And he refuses to let that happen. And it's amazing, though, he takes this whole experience, this really personal, difficult experience, and it launches him into these huge questions about power, you know, like government, the impact of colonialism, slavery. He connects the personal and the systemic. It's so important. Right. And he asks these questions that Honestly, a lot of us would shy away from. Like the purpose of life, God, morality, when faced with all this suffering. Exactly. Like that part where he's talking about the education system, he doesn't just mention it. He digs deep. Yeah. How it often reinforces the power structures that create these issues in the first place. He does. But it's not just critique. Yeah. He sees a way forward. Education, but a different kind. Not just like memorizing facts and figures. No. Yeah. He's talking about critical thinking. Giving yeah. people the tools to question, you know, challenge the way things are. That's what he believes will lead to real progress, not just aid, but actual change. It's about understanding the context, too, that things didn't just happen in a vacuum. Oh, absolutely. That line where he says, when others were on the moon, Africans were running away from slavery. It's powerful. It makes you stop and think. It forces you to recognize that not everyone starts from the same place. We can't talk about progress without acknowledging that historical disadvantage that so many African nations are dealing with. It's a lot to process. Really heavy stuff, honestly. But it's how Lewis ends it that really gets me. He doesn't give us the answers. He leaves us with a question. A challenge, almost. He asks us to think about a time when we were so angry, so resentful, that we might have considered hurting someone. It's uncomfortable to think about, but necessary. Mm -hmm. Because we all have that potential, that darkness within us. And when you multiply that across an entire society, it makes you think about how these conflicts even begin, you know? On a larger scale, yeah. It's those individual emotions, those resentments that can fuel these cycles of violence. It's a powerful message. It really is. But yeah. even though it's heavy, it's ultimately a story of hope, I think. It is. A testament to resilience, the power of education, and understanding history. If we want a better future, that is. It's call to action in a way. To look inward, educate ourselves, and fight against those systems that perpetuate inequality and conflict. Absolutely. It's a deep dive that will definitely stick with me, that's for sure.
Me too. And I think our listeners will be thinking about this for a long time to come.